Okay, so good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity to present this article here. Um, so let's get started. Um, um, okay, so I guess many of you are familiar with the idea of site channel attacks, but let uh, give a brief overview on that simply just to get to the motivation of the article. Um, so let's say in a standard sequential execution model that we know that it's possible in simple programs like those to actually retrieve information on different variables like so E, I, and J uh, based on external observation. So this is the side channel, essentially due to what's called timing attacks. And when developing critical software, it's kind of a good rule, which is called constant time policy, to make sure that there's no secret value appearing in those places, which is already the case when developing cryptographic softwares and libraries. And what we know also is that this uh, definitely does not uh, extend very well in the true setting, the true execution model that our processors have today, which is so speculative execution. And this is because of the spec vulnerabilities. So uh, more specifically here, we'll focus on the spec v1 kinds of attacks. And so they can boil down, they boil down to basically this, using the branch predictor or miss predictor, uh, or well, using the branch predictor of the processor, uh, it might be that, for instance, the program on the left get instruction at line two executed, so a read from memory, let's say, even though the condition, so i is smaller than 10, is not verified, meaning we're basically doing an out of uh, bound read. And so in turn, this might lead to a leakage uh, when doing uh, the storage at line four. Same thing kind of happened in the code on the right. So there are many countermeasures to that kind of things, but they are actually much less straightforward than the standard constant time policy. And so we'll focus on specific one just after that. And so basically this is, well, the starting point of the article as the objective is then to produce for this specific kind of attacks some tools with formal ver guarantees that programs would be, um, which would be verified by those tools, would be resilient against uh, said attacks. And we also want those tools to be kind of well, easy, easy to use and to be able to effectively assist developers in producing those cryptographic libraries. So let's detail specifically the kind of countermeasures we want to consider in our formal tool. And so for that, let's consider a simple, well, imperative toy language. Uh, actually very simple as, so let's say registers are really equal to all the variables that can be, and if we want to use the stack, the memory, we'll actually talk about arrays. So then we consider what's called the speculative load hardening countermeasure, which is something that was, for instance, introduced by the LLVM compiler, and it consists of three primitives. So um, the idea, well, the core idea of SLH is to give the program some dynamic introspection into its own execution, and by means of a flag that we'll call the misspeculation flag, which tells it dynamically that it is misspeculating or not. And then using this flag, it's then possible to effectively mask a value uh, so as to make sure that even if it gets leaked because of the previously mentioned kind of attacks, then it's not a problem in terms of security for the whole program. So the SLX primitives consist of three, well, there are three primitives which is well, initializing the flag, which corresponds to a fence operation, for those who know. And then the set MSF is so an update that is being done upon uh, entering a branching instruction and verifying using branchless logic instruction that we are not actually using, uh, where that we're not actually mispredicting. And then the third primitive is the well, protect instruction, which is basically using the flag as a bit mask to protect the potential leaking values. So let's take a small example with a, uh, an, uh, an array sum. So an array P in memory, and we want to sum all of its values. So this is quite straightforward code. And systematic protection with the LLVM compiler, for instance, would consist in adding the following instructions. So at every branch of the while instruction, which is basically so a loop but with branches, uh, we update the uh, misspeculation flag, making sure that we're not 
misspeculating, and then upon retrieving the value p from memory, we actually, into register t, we protect it. And, well, actually these programs, so it's definitely sound and make sure that there's no problem. But what we can notice is that, well, the variable t is actually local and it does not leak at any moment. So we'd like our um, verification tool to actually be able to say that this version of the program would actually be sufficient, meaning it's actually sufficient to protect the end result of the sum, so the sum itself. So uh, let's detail a bit how our type system so, would be working. And okay, the core idea is so we want our tool to go through the program and so type check it, meaning that if it succeeds, then there's no kind of possible attack. Uh, spec v1 uh, possible in the program. And so how we do that is by actually assigning so every variables and so on security types. So high being secret, low is public, and L is just to say that we are dynamically treating uh, type variables. And so one good idea to actually allow our ourselves to have some form of expressivity while typing the program is by means of using ordering. So this is purely arbitrary, but let's say that public is smaller than secret. And now this allows us to express a few things using those, come on, inequalities. So the first one would mean that the, the type tau is public because nothing is smaller than public. Uh, the second would mean that the value corresponding to tau2 is more secret than the value corresponding to tau1. And the third one, well, there's a typo, it should be reversed, but if it's h smaller than tau prime, then it means that tau prime is secret. And so this actually gives us quite a good amount of expressivity in the type system, but um, actually the core idea is to, come on, uh, not use one, but two type per variable or per expression. The first one, so let's call it tau, would be the secrecy we want to assign to that variable during normal sequential execution where everything's going as predicted. And sigma would correspond to the secrecy of the worst case. So typically the secrecy, the, the secrecy that happens when misspeculating with the processor. And so on these things, those two uh, type per variable, it actually enhance greatly uh, the expressivity of our type system. And so uh, I can give a small example about, of this. So let's consider this function, which is basically about reading an array uh, following a parameter i. And if we go out of bound of the array, we take the first value as a default value. So uh, the constraint we'd like to express would go as follows. When we read S from the array, we say that we're reading something that could be so at any position in the array, and so it's more secret that one can happen in the array, including during speculative execution. Then using the SLX primitive, we actually make sure that the worst case cannot be worse than the misspeculating one, because we would be effectively masking the value during speculation. And in the other branch, so something else happened, and we are actually reading always the first value of the array, meaning that there is no misspeculation possible. So then we only need one constraint, which is to say that secrecy is only as bad as is during normal sequential execution. Then another rule of the type system, uh, which I'm definitely not going to detail in fully here, uh, tells us that, well, secrecy after the execution of the if is just the worst case. And so we take the maximum of both sequential and speculative secrecies. And then upon leaking finally the value, well, we want them to be public. So anyway, this is just to say that with a simple example like this, we actually get satisfactory result which shows us that this program would be type checking thanks to the SLA uh, countermeasure and moreover that it would work even in some uh, S case scenarios that might not be called by other formal tools. So then let's talk a bit about the application that was done of this type system. Come on. Okay. Um, so the implementation was done with Jasmine, which is an academic language. 
and which is actively developed and focused on cryptographic development with lots of low level style instructions just to have fine control on the memory and where variables are stored and so on, which is also bundled with a formally verified compiler written in COC, as well as verification toolkit including, so verification for safety properties, security, uh, and so on. And so this implementation could be part of this toolkit later. And it's also important to notice that the toy language that we detailed before is obviously less expressive than Jasmine. And so this introduces quite lots of technicalities in the actual implementation. And also another important thing to notice is that this implementation causes no computational overhead during compilation for the programmer, which is, of course, good news, meaning that uh, it's uh, relatively easy to use in the development workflow. And so to prove the efficiency of our type system, what we did was to produce secure implementation, so secure against the SPECT v1 attacks for the various cryptographic protocols from the Ellipse library. And so I will focus later on the Chata 20 stream cipher. And so modifications to make these secure included different types of approaches, some of them being manual, using so specific registers and so on. So this is basically hacking, tweaking, and other solutions would be using the type system we produced. And so the first one being selective SLH, which is also presented in another paper, which consists in applying the LLVM protection and removing all the useless protect instructions we would be doing, while the other reordering is actually using all the potential of the type system to see if reordering instruction, of course, without changing the semantics of the program, would allow us to prevent some nefarious interactions between the variables and not using, well, those potential useless protects. So this gives the following charts. Uh, let's focus on a few colors, of course. Uh, the first one, the blue on top, is the standard SLH protection against the SPECT v1 again. And so this is by applying systematically all protect instructions we can. And so using the type system, selective SLH gets us back to 4.4% overhead, so compared to the reference implementation, which is already good. And we can see that in the case of Chacha 20, but also in the case of the other similar cases of all the other protocols, uh, we're able to get as low as about 0 or 1% overhead using reordering uh, while maintaining something which is so definitely safe and secure against spec v1. So to conclude, of course, there are plenty of ways to mitigate spec v1, but uh, the type system we design is clearly, well, apparently helps developers, well, why we were testing it, with certain, a good amount of uh, ease and flexibility using the different methods I described. And it's also important to highlight that this gives both secure implementations, but also competitive ones with very low overhead. And, well, there are, of course, plenty of things to say about the type system itself and how it could be improved, um, but, so giving rise to potentially future work. But, again, it's important to say that this means, this is kind of a proof that protecting against spec v1 in cryptographic implementations cost about less than the person uh, in performance and this is definitely a call to doing this consistently. Um, thank you for your attention, and I'd be happy to take your questions. We have time for a quick question. Yeah, I'm sorry for the time. <laughs> um, hi. So, first of all, great talk. Uh, you mentioned that it takes less than 1% in performance, but have, uh, how much development time did it take? Uh, to actually get to secure implementations. Um, actually, surprisingly, not so much. Because the thing is that uh, cryptographic development is kind of specific, because those protocols are already developed to be constant time in a sequential setting. And so basically, for instance, to apply the selective SLH protection, it's just about doing all the protection we would need and only removing the unnecessary ones. And so this is just a matter of a few compiling process passes 
just to remove successively Protex and to see when it's done. I see. So, yeah, yeah. definitely. Hi, uh, great talk and quick question about um, the applicability of it. Uh, you mentioned that you've uh, implemented this type system in Jasmine, yeah. but only in a toy language. And Jasmine uh, itself is also not um, like the main language of cryptographic implementation yet. But um, do you have an idea of how to get uh, cryptographic library developers to use your research? Uh, yeah, J just a quick thing. Um, the thing about the toy language is that it's used to do the pen and paper proof of the soundness of the type system. Uh, but the actual implementation is made for the about the entirety of the Jasmine language, oh, nice. uh, or a great portion of it. I mean, for instance, some, yeah, not all of it, but yes, a great portion. And as for implementing it in other languages, I'd say it's not always so easy because um, Jasmine, for instance, is very well centered around this fine control of registers, stack memory, and this is kind of essential in the type system to have fine control over that. Whereas if you consider other languages where you still have those um, yeah, stack allocation being, or, well, I don't know. But in other languages, it might not be so easy to track where variables are going. And so the type system would definitely not be as easy to write, I would say. So, so if you have explicit flow of variables, yeah. then you could implement it in another language as well. I th I would say so, yes. I mean, I don't have so much confidence in this because I'm... Sorry, we need Thank to you. move on to the next speaker. It's Lucas again. <laughs> 